Um, wow, it is an absolute honor um, to be here with such amazing company, both those people speaking and the folks in the audience. And, uh, and I'm very privileged, and thank you for having me. Um, my story isn't particularly remarkable. Um, my story is probably fairly ordinary in some ways. But I think what maybe makes it interesting is it's a story that many, many millions and millions of people have their own version of. Um, my story is about my lifelong struggle with weight and uh, my relationship with food. So um, my, my relationship with food started early. It was fairly well known in my family that I took after my dad, and he was fat. Um, and my brother and sister took after my mum, and she was skinny. Um, and what's fair about that? Uh, <laughs> but uh, that's just how it was. And I learned some habits early on in my life. Um, my parents were divorced, and one week we would live with my father, who was an entrepreneur and a fantastic cook. And he would serve up food every week on the table for my brother and sister and I. And the, the uh, aim of dinner in my dad's house was to inhale everything on the plate in front of you as fast as possible so that you could have second helpings before anyone else got to it. Um, <laughs> then I would spend a week living with my mum, and my mum was a nurse, and she used to work nights. And so the week we stayed with her, her eating habits were terrible. She used to live on apples and chocolate. And that was about it. So the, the aim of dinner at my mum's, and she, she would try and cook for her kids. You know, mum, she's a fantastic mum, and she would try and cook for her kids, but it wasn't really her thing, okay? So we would be served up all kinds of interesting food. So the aim at my mum's was to survive uh, dinner and then get down to McDonald's <laughs> afterwards to eat. So, <laughs> so I learned these habits early on, and really they became about... Um, survival and, and, and scavenging. And, and I remember my sister phoning me up and saying, you know, do you want to go shopping tomorrow? And I said, sure, where are we having breakfast? And, and where are we going to have lunch? Will they be fully booked? Should I book a table? Um, <laughs> uh, and so it, that's how, you know, the habits of my life began. And so when I was a teenager, I was 170 pounds. Um, and very slowly and very gradually from that point on, I gained just a little bit of weight uh, on a regular basis, probably like half a pound a month, not even an eighth of a pound a week. I was just gaining a small amount. But so then by the time I'm in my early 30s, I'm 220 pounds and more. Um, I'm in a size 22 dress and, uh, you know, it's fine. It's okay. I take after my dad, remember? This is just how it is. Um, I'm happy. I have a loving husband. Um, I have great friends, and I'm fat, and I'm funny. You know, I'm the funny, fat friend. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> that was who I was. And, uh, and it was fine. And you know, the fact that, you know, I, I would turn down promotions at work because I didn't really fancy making presentations to people, and the fact that, um, you know, that, that's, that those things weren't going on in my life, that was fine. I had a loving husband, I was the fat, funny friend. It was all good. And then a couple of things happened um, in, my, in my early 30s. And first thing that happened was my father died. Um, he was 57, and he died from a massive heart attack. And uh, around the same time, I had my son, Ben, who's now seven and a half. And I put those two things together in my head, and I thought about myself, and I thought, you know what? As I think about it, <laughs> uh, taking after my dad and being overweight is probably not that great a thing uh, to have happened to me. So, uh, you know, my, my son was never going to meet his granddad, and, you know, maybe I'll never meet my grandchildren, but I certainly don't want to be sabotaging my own efforts of being able to do so. And so I decided that I needed to do something about it, and I had no idea what. I had no idea what to do about it. You know, I, I, in my mind, I've always taken after my dad. That's just the way it is. That's how life worked. And then I met this woman called Linda. And Linda had had her own weight loss journey. And she just took me very gently by the hand and she said, you know what, let's just take one small step. What would be one small step? And I said, well, you know, I don't eat breakfast. And she said, well, why don't you start eating breakfast? Maybe once or twice next week. And that was the first step on my journey. And she held my hand and very gently, she encouraged me bit by bit to achieve something I never would have imagined possible. I took after my dad. Like, Maybe I could have lost 20 pounds. That would have been a big achievement in my mind towards being more healthy. 
But she took me on a journey that I ended up losing 70 pounds, and I think there's a, a picture of the before version of this um, there. Yes, so that was me um, back in 2007. <laughs> but you know, that's, that's not the, the, uh, the end of the story, that's just the beginning of the story, because the thing I really learned, the thing that became so important to me on this journey was about that human connection, the connection I had with Linda, and the connection I had with the people Linda introduced me to, and the group of people who shared the same challenges as I did. And I think Donna said it beautifully this morning when she said, if you get people together to, ch to face a challenge, magic happens. And that's what happened for me, it was about connecting with people who had the same kind of challenges as me, and engaging with them, and thinking about solutions to the problem together, and you know that is a that's an ongoing thing, right? You know this is this is not a one and done thing. This is something I I am challenged with every single day. I moved to the United States of America and gained 20 pounds. It was you know something, <laughs> some things happen in your life that kind of take you off track again. But if you remember that it's always about connecting with the people who really get it, really get you, and can really help you, then that's what makes all the difference in the end. Um, so it's it's a lifelong it's a lifelong challenge. Um, for, for all of us, you know, whether you have weight to lose or not, the way that we aspire to eat uh, for all of us is not necessarily the way that we always do eat. Um, and I think, you know, as, as groups of people together with the same challenges, we can help one another to overcome those challenges. And that was my story. And uh, uh, thank you very much for indulging me and sharing it with you.